project was put together by um, Soil Fern Farms and Landcorp and some other parties and MPI, uh, obviously the government, in a PGP program looking at the, the value chain from consumers right the way back to, to farm. There was five work streams put together. The first of those work streams was dealing with a consumer. What could we do with a consumer that would actually result in a premium? The next work stream was back in processing. So if we knew what the consumer was after, what could we do in processing? Behind that, there's another work stream in genetics. And so if we understood what the consumer was after, then perhaps we could select for it in animals. Behind that was another project looking, what could we do at a farm level to make sure we meet those consumer requirements and also improve productivity on farm. And then underneath all of that whole project was the software. So we could join all that information together, drive productivity and get a better outcome for consumers. The biggest success in the marketplace is we have a whole new product range that didn't exist before. In the processing side of things, probably the biggest success was you know, the ability to trace products through a processing plant. But in the sheep genetics side of things, we can now select for eating quality, which you couldn't do previously. And the same SNP chip we developed for eating quality is also can be used for the rest of the sheep industry for all the productivity traits. Getting back onto the farm side of things, the biggest success there probably was really, I guess, software. You know, getting people to monitor, measure, manage information and linking that all the way through the chain. Beyond the programme's wrap-up, it's really focused on how these things are commercialised. Soil fern farms are continuing rolling out new products around the world, and basically it's a question of scaling up, and it's scaling up quite significantly. The whole genetics programme is really being rolled out through beef and lamb genetics, so having gone from an R&D programme, it's now going to be commercialised really in an industry good basis uh, across the sector. And the software business is now a standalone business, commercial, running on its own steam. BQQ, I think, was the best example of value chain theory really coming into practice. Uh, starting with the consumers, the first thing we learned was something like 20% of consumers actually didn't think they were getting a great eating experience out of beef. Uh, so there was market opportunity. Back in processing, we found ways of actually using measurement systems to actually work out the eating quality of the beef. Genetics was pretty well covered. And then back on farm, we found that actually farmers can have a major effect on the eating quality of those animals for the consumer. And then we put it all together in software so that the farmer can see what the eating scores are, they can understand what they're doing on farm to actually change those eating scores, and on that basis actually earn themselves a premium, so 40 cents a kilogram for improved quality beef. And overall that's actually added up last year to $3 million worth of premiums back to farmers. So that really is the best example of saying, here's an opportunity with consumers, here's how we measure, track and trace, here's how we do things on farm to line it all up and create value for everybody. The aim of the marketing stream right from day one was to determine how much more value we could add to New Zealand red meat, lamb, beef and venison. Part of our thinking right from day one was about how we get the product from farmers in a state that consumers would pay more for, hence the start of the plate to pasture strategy. So it was taking consumer thinking all the way back to the farm. So we undertook a very big program, Beef EQ. We had over 96,000 consumer tests, and these were blind taste tests, and we married that up with carcass attributes that went all the way back to the farm, and were able to build a pretty sophisticated science-based grading system where we can now guarantee the tastiness, the tenderness, and the juiciness of our beef. We've taken the Beef EQ grading and launched a number of new products. Beef retail packs, so they're attractively packaged, ready to cook products for consumers out of a supermarket, but also reserve beef that we sell to chefs in the top restaurants around the world. Throughout the seven years of the Farm IQ PGP, we undertook a number of extensive research studies on lamb eating quality. And the good news is to New Zealand farmers that New Zealand lamb is a very, very high quality product already. 
One of the key ways that we discovered to add value was our retail packaging. We found that when you make lamb look this good and this attractive and compelling, consumers absolutely will pay more for it. And the consumer taste panels show that they would rate lamb in this packaging much higher than lamb in very plain packaging. So that's an example of how to create value. The more important part, in my view, is how much of that value do we capture and bring back here to New Zealand. We've done a lot of research on individual markets around the world and we did a big study right at the start to identify attractive premium markets. We've narrowed that down to four key markets, New Zealand being one of them, where we do a lot of test marketing, also Germany, China and the USA. In the next five years, I think we'll see a lot of growth out of those big three global markets. The processing work stream for Farm IQ really had a vision of, of what we call process optimization. And that meant that we wanted to be able to measure uh, the yield and the quality of every animal that came into the plant so that we could feed that data back to farmers and we could also use it to do smarter things within processing and match the resulting cuts to the customer. Our process optimization vision really was built around individual animals and individual carcasses. So we had to track them right through to the boning room and beyond so that all the information we could collect could go back to farmers against that animal and he or she could use that information to make better decisions on farm. Consistency is one of the big untapped areas of value in the meat industry. BFEQ is built on this whole concept of consistency where you measure key elements around eating quality of carcasses. The research work we did on improving yield and quality was really part of a long-term process. So we worked with a lot of the universities in New Zealand and overseas and AgriSearch and other groups like that to understand a lot more about yield, a lot more about quality and to start also working with customers well, there are quite a few positive outcomes that came from the improvement work that we did. Developing understanding, producing uh, national codes for things like chilled land production in New Zealand, um, developing uh, convincing arguments for UK supermarkets to accept um, meat that had been spray chilled, for example, to improve yield. A lot of little projects like that. We pretty much nailed the traceability work to be able to track animals and carcasses through our plants. We're well down the track on yield measurement. We haven't got so far on quality measurement, but other people are picking that work up. So when all those building blocks are in place, then that vision will start to become more of a reality. EID is important for the farmer to help the farmer make better decisions, but it's also important in processing because the automated processing machinery we use now for breaking carcasses down and further processing of primals needs that information coming through and it has to be able to do it at full speed by reading the RFID tag and the skids and trolleys and slides that bring those carcasses through. So it's absolutely critical, it's the backbone of the whole process. If we can optimise what we do with every carcass, then we can get more value out of that carcass, rather than try and treat them as batches, which has been the traditional method. For the farmer, he gets more money. It's as simple as that. Uh, if, the, if the processor can, can target specific markets and get premiums in those markets, then they can pay the farmer more. Farm IQ Systems was spun out of the PGP program at the beginning of 2016. The PGP aimed to increase the value of the red meat value chain. The Farm IQ software um, was a key part of that in terms of joining consumers up with what's actually happening on farm and increasing the value of farmers' produce as well as the productivity on the farm. It brings together information about the land, the feed on the farm, the animals and the people it's actually the start of a farming ecosystem. So it enables the farmer to engage with their farm consultant or their meat company or even their farm suppliers in a more useful, more efficient way. 
And we've seen, for example, cost savings in terms of uh, how people are able to do environmental plans, uh, things that probably weren't anticipated at the start of the PGP, but which are now a, a key part of what PharmIQ does. PharmIQ is available on computers, but these days farmers do pretty much everything on their app. And so the advent of smartphones has really required us to put more and more functionality on the app. We set out to manage land and animals, but increasingly it's been really important for farmers to manage health and safety and timesheets and, and all that sort of thing. And joining that up with what's actually happening on farm has been quite useful for them. PharmIQ software was a very significant investment in, at a time when uh, this was not the done thing to be doing and uh, the, the vision that the PGP had means that we actually have something uh, perfectly timed to take advantage of what our customers are actually needing. It's a building block for the future. It came out of red meat but it's going to be used more broadly in dairy and other spheres as an open neutral platform where information can be exchanged between farmers and the people that supply them with genetics or fertilizer or other products and actually the, the people who do the you know, traceability and, and consumers who want to know where their food comes from. Uh, and that, that platform is really going to set New Zealand um, in a really, really strong position um, for the future. Meat quality is a very valuable trait. It's already being uh, rewarded in the New Zealand industry in beef. We wanted to get better breeding values for meat quality in sheep, and so we needed to develop a high density SNP chip. It was developed by our group in association with the International Sheep Genomics Consortium, which included people from Australia, the United States, and the UK. The key traits um, that can be measured are tenderness, uh, the pH of the meat, and the intramuscular fat content. But colour was also important. Farmers can use this by buying better rams from their ram breeders. The ram breeders can use the technology by using SNP chips to estimate the breeding values for the meat quality traits. This is the high density chip. We can do 12 samples on it and it can check out 600,000 variants. This is the low density chip that the breeders now use. It's got about 8,000 variants and we can put 96 samples on that. Sheep was a focus because it's a very valuable industry in New Zealand. The technology has become much more accessible. The HD chips were originally going to cost somewhere between $800 and $1,000 per animal each. We managed to develop it for two to three hundred dollars, but the reduced chip that's being used in the industry now are available to the breeder at about twenty-five dollars a sample. The key technology that we developed, spin-off technology, was genotyping by sequencing. Instead of testing for specific variants, it's a low-cost way of sequencing animals. Almost all the stud tier and the New Zealand deer industry uses this test as of 2016. We are extending the technology out into the various aquaculture industries and we are hoping as part of other projects that it will be taken up by the ryegrass and white clover seed industries. The Farm IQ PGP project, um, we were a relatively small portion of it, um, but the the benefits, both direct and indirect, will, will have major impacts going forward for the next 20 or 30 years. <laughs>